irreverent, entertaining, cool. You're listening to LA Talk Radio. You're listening to Question Reality with Priscilla Leona, right here on LA Talk Radio. Welcome to Question Reality Radio Show. I'm Priscilla Leona, producer and host of this show, and we are coming to you live from Los Angeles, California. For 10 years, we've been providing our audience with entertainment industry career advice. Now, this show is for you if you are questioning your career reality about pursuing a career in show business. Now, the guests on this show include Emmy winners, Grammy winners, Tony Award Award winners, reality TV stars, producers, directors, casting directors, talent managers, actors, singers, comedians, writers, <sighs> PR agents, screenwriters, script supervisors. Just it just goes on and on and on. And we throw in a darn entertainment attorney in December just because hopefully your career is at the point where you need an entertainment attorney. So check yourself in December. Is my career in need of an entertainment attorney? If it's not, revamp, revamp, revamp. Now, if you missed any of our shows, here are the three ways that you can find any of our shows. Um, they're always for free. Number one, go to our archive page on the latalkradio.com website and search for our show title, which is Question Reality. Uh, number two, go to iTunes, the Google Play Store or Stitcher.com under the podcast section. And number three, the free mobile app, and you can get that on the App Store or the Google Play Store. Now, when you download the free LA Talk Radio mobile app, make sure that you explore our other shows because we have a bunch of super fun hosts discussing all kinds of things. Say that you need a little problem in the old bedroom, 12 a.m. on a Friday night. Well, there is a host for you. If you have any problems, this, this radio station seems to have a, they have somebody for everyone. And, um... That's no exception. We have something for you today. And I know I've been getting emails and texts. People are so excited about our guests. Oh, oh, there's something happening. Oh, oh, oh. Well, there, there's lots of things happening right now. I have no connection. I have no connection. But that's okay because I have two phallic symbols coming at me right now. All's good in the world. <laughs> Hot damn. Hot. That's all right. I'm going to continue. No problem. Because I forgot to start my Facebook Live. So this is good. Here we go. Starting live video. Everything's good. Connection. Let's see. Let's put this on the prettiest. Prettiest. Uh, let's see. Look how Jason handles this. We're back, people. Well, I forgot to start my Facebook Live. So it all works out. Now. When you download the uh, free LA Talk Radio mobile app, make sure you explore all of our other shows. And finally, if you want to refer a guest, <laughs> that is Jason. Finally, if you want to be a guest or refer someone to be on my show to promote yourself, your product, or help listeners with sage career advice, uh, we are currently booking for... 2019. So please go to our official website, which is questionrealityradioshow.com, not latalkradio.com. latalkradio.com is the website where we air the show. Uh, you want to go to questionrealityradioshow.com. That is where you go to submit for guest consideration. Let's see. Now, people are going to be coming in fast and furious every week when I do my Facebook Live. We have so many people. You're looking at the pretty Albert and the gorgeous Tina here. We're going to introduce them in a second. I got, boy, when I uh, posted this little lovely uh, that was going to be on the show today, my gosh, I got a ton of emails and a ton of texts, so many questions. I'm going to try to get to them, but... I don't think I'll get to all of them. Now, let me tell you briefly 
No, we don't want it now. Oh, that's right. We don't want it to be on the exclusive. We need someone to like navigate it. Albert is supposed to be in charge of this. You're supposed to be doing the Facebook Live. Thank you, Jason. Jason is now DP. Our first guest who has the camera is Jason Michael Kennedy. He is. Thank you. Did you see that, Jason? <laughs> He's like, what the hell kind of corny shit goes on in this radio show? Uh, Jason Michael Kennedy, he is the casting director with Susan. Please make sure I pronounce it right. Bluestein or Bluestein? First one, Bluestein. Blue okay. Bluestein Casting. And um, this is the casting office which casts for the long-running CBS series, NCIS, NCIS Los Angeles. And I am correct, NCIS New Orleans too, or they used to? We did the first three seasons. But okay. Now that's being cast out of New Orleans. Okay. All right. Let's get you a little closer. <clears throat> Let's hear a deep, haughty breath, Jason. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Turn him up a little bit. Turn Jason up a little bit, please. Okay. So Jason has worked on more than 50 television shows and film projects over the last 18 years. 18 years? You only look like you're 22. Thank What's you. going on here? Uh, he is a proud member of the Hollywood Teamsters Local 399. See, I didn't even know that that, that was uh, Local 399. Learn mm -hmm. something new. And and the National Board of Directors for the Casting Society of America. Now he's supposed to get the applause because oh. he's got so many things. So many things. And if you want to please follow Jason Michael Kennedy, you can follow him on Twitter at Kennedy Casting, at Kennedy Casting. Also on Instagram, at Kennedy Casting. And you can check out all of his credits on imdb.com. Now, we also have a little sexy lady here today. Thank you so much. I, I'm putting Jason to work as a DP today. Thank you. Um, she is going to be the co-host. Her name is Christina Carlisi. Yes. Tina Carlisi. Carlisi. Now she has a ton of credit, so I had to chop it down. I, it was there were so many. She's just been doing this for so long. Um, some of her credits include. I just picked my favorite shows. Okay, okay. Supernatural, Criminal Minds, Charmed, CSI, uh, The Mentalist, Rizzoli and Isles, Bones, and of course Glee. Yeah. Now it's supposed to be a. You are. You're fired. You're not getting any pay for this show. And um. You can go to her website. It's ChristinaCarlisi.com. You can also find her on IMDb.com. And we have the sexy Asian persuasion, one of my very close friends, uh, Colin Lim. Yes. Hello. Yes, 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 yes. And uh, you can find all of his credits on imdb.com. So we are, uh, the featured guest is, of course, Jason Michael Kennedy. And I thought that I would come from the angle of an experienced actress um, and also a, uh, he, can we call you an ingenue? Because that's for female. What would you call a male who's starting out in the business? A ingenue at er. A hunk. Uh, a, hunk <laughs> a, a hunky, hunky Asian guy. There you go. Um, now, it's a weird story, um, but you know I bring people from novice all the way up to Emmy winner, Grammy winner, Tony winner, and I do that because I want people to hear uh, what happens. The whole, the whole, is it, gam should we say gamut? Gambit? Yeah. Gam gamut, the whole gamut. And I met um, Colin at um what was it jury duty jury duty yeah we were there the whole entire day <laughs> never saw each other until the end of the day and then we just ended up walking to the car he was working professionally jason um in downtown la a very good job making a ton of money he wants to be an actor he told me he was a about to quit and pursue a career as an actor. So he is, I guess, what you call a novice. So I thought that would be good for people who are listening. He could ask questions from that angle. And then you, being a professional, could ask questions for people who are actually working professionals and still may have questions for someone like Jason. So um, you can chime in whenever you want, but I'm going to start the I'm going to start this off because I found out something about you, Jason Michael Kennedy. Uh -oh. 
I heard that you were an amateur cat photographer <gasps> and a professional people watcher. And explain. <laughs> yes, well, I want to get this. Yes, the, the, the cat photographer part is, is true. Um, I have two cats, and I love taking pictures of them. Uh, uh, they're the cutest things in the world. Yeah. And I've always been a cat lover. But yes, uh, I... I just I feel like um, my pictures of my cats are are uh, professional enough to uh, to put out there into the world. I love and, cat pictures. Oh, yeah. I have a friend, Carrie uh, Cavalier. She's a, a photographer. She has this cat named Winchester, or Winston. Went Churchill. <laughs> <laughs> she dresses this cat up for every occasion. Yes. Fourth of July, Christmas, the little cat is like 150 sure. <laughs> years old and his eyes are, and she just, she'll dress him up. You know, he has no say in the matter, nope. but he, <laughs> I think he's happy though. Yeah. I think he it's, looks happy. There's it's a... fun. No, the cats are not. Happy. I'll tell you, they'll, they'll put up with it. They may talk, you know, they may tolerate it, but uh, no, my mom, uh, we've always had cats. My mom would put things on top of their heads. Um, just, just to have balance them there, and the cats would just sit there oh. with something. You know, it could be, it could be, uh, it could be like an actual hat or a napkin, or you know, just just trying to balance a, a bottle or something. You know, something not too yeah. heavy, just to be, you know, just. And they would them. sit there. And they would just. It sit was there. like they knew it was there, and they had to balance yeah. it. Or and else there's just, no catnip for them. No, yeah, they no. They, they knew they had to no, deal with no. this torture. They did. Wow. They just, yeah. So how you do you do you dress them up like my friend Carrie does for not, all the seasons? No, not usually. Um, I I did. I I honestly I did get some uh, Halloween costumes yeah. for my two cats. Um, one of them was like a um, a Tina Turner wig. Basically, it looks like uh, oh it, was, it was awesome. Um, but of course, you know, as soon as you put it on, the cat feels like they're, you know they're being held down. Uh, so they're like you know, yeah, scrunched down to the ground. Yeah. And, and uh, and then my other cat, uh, we got him uh, like a cowboy outfit, uh, which is so cute, hat and everything. It looks like he's got little feet. Oh my gosh, it's, nope. it's the best. But they, now, yeah, do they ever claw you? Minutes, you know, no, they don't claw me, but they run away from they me. They run. <laughs> so like, when they oh, no, see the wig coming, coming. coming, yes, exactly. <laughs> they yeah. see the wig coming, they're like running for the hills, right? What yes. about now? Are you do a dog lover at all? Or? Yes, yeah, we have a dog too, and we no costumes for the dogs. Well, actually, <laughs> this Halloween Since season, you asked. yes, she got to wear a Freddy Krueger uh, costume, oh which God. was a big hit w with my teenage son, because um, he loves all things horror, uh, and uh, and she looked amazing in it. She was great. Yeah. Wow. But again, you know, pets don't like <laughs> no. like outfits, so they feel like they're constricted and they can't move, and so yeah, it was and very do you, And you know, Albert and I, um, we um, found three this guy that was selling kittens by the side of the road years yeah. ago so we took three of them and i thought well i want to make sure i give them a bath well that didn't go over no, too well like oh <laughs> my god they clawed the hell out of me i mean they do not like water but do you know some cats do like water it, it i was watching this nature show and it just depends where where their bloodline is I from think, i think they like choice too i, I think, yeah you know if you're forcing them into something they they will yeah put up a fight for mm, sure. but yeah. you know some people can walk them on a leash and i can't believe that i've tried that you've yes. tried <laughs> yes, one of my older cats. Yes, what? I tried that. Oh yes. my god! Well, I got to see these pictures. Okay, where are they? Are they on Instagram? Um, where are these cat yes. pictures? Inst my cat pictures are definitely on Instagram. All right, uh, and I'll be posting more soon. <laughs> Please post some soon. <laughs> Holiday pictures. Uh, now, what is this about you being a professional people watcher? We hope that that's like in the <laughs> the, the realm of sanity. Yeah, well, you know, that's well, that's my job. I yeah. I'm a casting director, so I just kind of use that as you know, just being playful. Yeah. But, yeah I'm watching you but i'm a casting director right. it's not creepy it's, it's for work exactly i'm not i'm not I'm yeah, stalking yeah, yeah, yeah. you you have to because you. you're you're trying to see what's beyond what's underneath the social mask yes, yes. because people as soon as they come in that room you know they got their social mask on you want to know what goes on because you want to know what's coming on that so i'm digging it i'm a professional people watcher too <laughs> um now what inspired you to become a casting director are you one of these people who were per, you were pursuing a career maybe as an actor and then said nah i'm not interested in that i'd rather be casting well i mean yes as as a kid as a teenager um i i i enjoyed acting i was in doing musical theater i was definitely very uh active um and 
I, I think the, the turning point for me was, uh, was in middle school. I, I was still performing. I still loved doing that up until my early 20s. But I realized when we were doing a talent show and I was trying to encourage my friends to go and, and audition for this thing. Because I was like, oh, I, I know you can do this. You should totally. And I w it was just something that kind of clicked with me. And I loved it. And I loved you know, finding talent, so to speak, uh, at that age. And it wasn't, I didn't know what it was that yeah. I was look, you know, hoping to do. But in my early 20s, I was you know, still doing plays. And I was like, you know, there's, I, I think I want to, to do this. I just don't know what it's called or right. how to get into it. And I was living in South Florida at the time, and I uh, I uh, started uh, applying to I did my research, started applying uh, for casting offices uh, for a job. Um, there were like three or four casting directors yeah, down there, right? so there was no work, um, uh, no opportunities. And um, I uh, fortunately um, through uh, connections, you know, with my my boyfriend at the time, um, met somebody who was a manager, talent manager interned with him for a day <laughs> he uh he actually, one whole day one whole day <laughs> and he knew okay. someone who was starting up their own agency and um and he's like hey you should you know interview with them for for an assistant job i was like oh great and i did i got the job i worked with them for about oh gosh i want to say four or five years um and uh and that was a great learning experience. I know I never want to be an agent again, um, <laughs> but it was it was fantastic. I loved you know developing these careers and working with actors and and putting people on tape. It was really a fun experience. Um, and and then I used that um, that opportunity to kind of segue into casting. Yeah, made the jump and moved out here and started. What, working when when was agent. that? Like, eight, was that eighteen years ago? Two thousand one. Yeah, <sighs> okay. it was actually. Um, it was October of 2001 that I, I came out here, did kind of an exploratory uh, run of the city and started interning at UDK and some other offices and, and, uh, and, and made it the move official in April. Um, actually, no, in January, uh, I made the move official and, and got my first job. So, wow. Yeah. What yeah. do you think of that, Tina? Do you have any questions about that? I, I have so many questions wow. as an actress yeah. to a casting director, Go but ahead. I want to digress for one second sure. back to the cat photography. Oh, no. So I, too, am a cat lover, and I have two crazy cats, and I also have a bearded dragon, and I have one of my cats. I have two gray tabbies, mm. and one of them, Bucky, is in love with the bearded dragon, and I have pictures of the two of them, the bearded dragon and the tabby, th that are remarkable. And I live down the street from a woman who's a photographer, a professional photographer, and sh I showed her the pictures. And she said, you need to enter these in a photo contest. And I'm like, come on, I took them on my iPhone. And she said, no, seriously. And I did. And I won. Oh, yay. Wow. One of the That's pictures. They're, the, these pictures are remarkable. I'll show them to you afterwards. Okay. But they're, they love each other. They have this intimate relationship with each other. So you have this prickly, bearded, dragon, lizard, prehistoric looking thing. And this fuzzy, sweet little kitten who they just are, they're, I love enraptured with each other. Species relationships. Interspecies relationships. I love, I love that. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Now um, let's cut to uh, oh gosh, I can't, I, uh, Colin. Yeah. Do you have any questions for Mr. Jason? Oh, a lot. Oh, uh, well, I just start? ask one, so, just and then one? We'll, we'll go around. Okay. One, one, one. Um, I just want to shout out to Nikki Nicole here, who's a cat lover too. Oh, Nikki Nicole, that's my cousin. Oh, oh she <laughs> is a cat lover too. She's a cat lover. I think she has a dog. She likes all animals. Yeah. So you hear that, know. Nikki? Jason gave you a shout out. You know that's you're moving on up to the East Side, girl. When Jason gives you a shout out, um, so from the perspective of um, pretty much, I would say, how long have you been acting now, professional? Well, well working on your professional career. Uh, screen acting has been about two years. It's been about two years since I first met you at the oh, jury duty. Wow, <laughs> so that that was before I quit my job. Wow. For, um, so um. Pursuing this full time will be about two two years, but I was up on stage for about ten years. Oh, so. doing theater, theater, yeah, theater. musical theater, and stuff yeah. Like that. So, um, yeah. So I mean, I, as so far you, as screen you, acting, I'm pretty a newbie. Yeah. So when you I'm go in, do you have any questions for someone of Jason's caliber of casting director that you want to ask? Yeah. Well, I'm. If you went in in front of him, what would you? I would say he's he looks 
super nice. Like uh, yeah. usually, I th- I would That's expect true. casting directors or like these directors to look very intimidating, and they were like they have these piercing eyes and be like, okay, what who, who I they're um, professional people yeah. watchers, and they'll be like, yeah, <laughs> pro- professional people watchers, and and their 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 looks it just gives me the vibe that they're thinking like, yeah. what do I see him as? That kind of stuff, and mm. it just puts you in like. Uh, mm. you know, now, what do you got to say about that, Jason? There, I have an answer for that, but you're the yeah. casting director. Well, I, mean, <laughs> I need to answer the question. We're, we're people too, uh, yeah. but no, um, I, I, there is this image of casting directors that's been portrayed in television and film that you know that we're you know uh, dismissive, yeah. and, and you know, and and yes, you will find some people who have a lot of things are going on, and they yeah. might seem that way, um, but yeah, I, I, for me. But they don't. You 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 want actors to Absolutely. come in there and rock the part because if yes. they rock the part, you get to cast them and our... go home early and get a cocktail. <laughs> we, don't, we don't want to have to do this over and over right. and over again right. uh, for this one role. Yeah, no, we want everybody who comes in to, to knock our, our socks off and to be great. And, and we, I mean, in our office, we try to make it a very warm and inviting environment because we want people to feel comfortable right. to do their work and to do their best and to so, not feel you know, stressed out. In addition to, all right, you expect an actor to come into the room prepared, Mm -hmm. bringing their picture and resume, coming in prepared, looking like the part, you know, all of that. Aside from that, what else do you want an actor to uniquely bring into the room? Other than being prepared and professional and friendly and all that, what what else do you want to, are you looking for in an actor? When do you know? that someone's right the yeah. shit you know what I mean? <laughs> well I, you know there's i think a, i asked about six questions there but that's fine you, no i mean yes i we we want actors to come in and and make strong uh choices uh have an idea have done their research yes being prepared absolutely um and bring a little bit of your own personality you know to the character if it applies and um we want to know who you are as a person in that short amount of time um, that we get to see you. Uh, you know, in television, we don't get to, you know, really have a conversation very much with actors when they come in and read, um, but we can get a sense of who you are and and how you're going to be to work with, too, because that's a big part of it. It's not just your performance, but also are you going to be a jerk? Are you going to be the person who asks too many questions? Um, you know, do you really want this job? Um, there are actors that come in, and sometimes you get the feeling they don't, that they're just going through the motions. Um, and so, yeah, we want a little bit of, of who you are and... And we want, um, I think, I, always, I, I, I tell actors sometimes that you want us to want more, you know? You, you want to kind of keep us wanting more. Right. To, we want to get to know you. So uh, bring that, uh, that element uh, into the game. Is it important that when an actor, I, I've had this discussion with other, with the other actors, that when, it, when, it, when an actor walks into the room, do they need to be this character you're looking for? Or, you know, sometimes I audition for things that are very different from who I am just as me, Tina yeah. Carlisi, walking into a room. They're, I'm a, more of a character actor, so, and I can do a lot of different things. So when I'm auditioning for something that is outside my just usual persona, yeah. is it important that you see that character walk into the room? Or do you like to see the human walk into the room and then... Go into the, the character. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I mean, I will. I should preface this question and probably for all the others. Um, these are all my opinions and how we work mm-hmm. in our office, and right. everyone's going to have a different idea. But yes, I I feel like um, it's not necessary to come into the char- into the room as that character. Uh, but I completely understand when actors need to. You know, they they really need to get into a certain zone. Um, you know, emotionally and. It just it helps to uh, to to stay in character, uh, and then sometimes they'll you know pop out of it afterwards, or sometimes they won't, and we completely get that. That's fine. Um, but no, I I love I love getting to know a little bit about who you are, and it could be as something as simple as just how you say hello. You know, um, it doesn't have to be a, you know you telling us a story about how you got got to the audition um it could just be you know something you know something simple i'm telling you we've heard lots of stories i know i used to i used to yeah i talking about that um you know i'm from the east coast i used to direct theater and you know in community little community theater you produce and you cast and you do it all right we were auditioning for you know the play rashomon which is a japanese play well a guy came in we were like next the guy comes 
jumping, ran into the, 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 the office and he had on a full ninja outfit and <laughs> whipped his sword out. He was a method actor. Nothing wrong with that, but he was it. serious. And it was like, okay, I appreciated that. But the other people did not like that at all. So it really depends. I think some cast directors are like, oh, I think that's cool. And others are like, I cannot believe. So, you know, you really, it's a judgment call. Um, now, can you please describe a typical week, a work week for a casting director? Like we all want to know what goes on. So what happens from the time the story comes, you got to cast for sure. a character? What um, happens? I'll start. I mean, I mostly Just cast pick, television, so I'll yeah, kind of keep television, you yeah. in that world because it is very different from features. Um, Just but, say a part for NCIS. Yeah, so yeah. we will get a script um, usually the night before we have to have a concept meeting, so we need to read it that night. Um, I start breaking down the characters so that we have a clear idea of what we're talking about. And, uh, and then we have our meeting. We talk about the characters, what they're looking for, what they're not looking for. Uh, and then we release that breakdown. Um, and I'm giving you the short version. There's a lot of oh, approval oh steps in the, in the process. Uh, and we release that breakdown to agency managers. So we usually get that breakdown out within four or five hours of having that meeting. And we're starting to go through submissions. And we can have easily up to 3,000 submissions for some roles. Um, and it gets... It, uh, oh, it, Sometimes it's less, but that is that is a lot. Uh, and if, you, of course, you have 12 roles, um, it can be uh, overwhelming. Um, but, yeah, we have a great team in our office, so uh, we, we, you know, we'll split up some of the work there. And uh, we'll have pre-reads, uh, if not the very next day, definitely on our third day of prep. Um, we'll start pre-reading a, uh, a bunch of actors, um, easily 20 or 30 actors per role. And um, by our fourth or fifth day of prep, we are having our producer sessions. Uh, we have our, our uh, producers in the room, our writers and our directors, which is awesome. I can't, I mean, it's a amazing collaborative experience having them in the room, and we have the best producers, I have to say, on both of these shows. Um, and uh, it's just, it's, it's so much fun. And uh, we have about two days of producer sessions, and then we have to make deals. And uh, we try to get those deals in time for a, uh, a table read the very next day, uh, which actors are invited to, and then um, and then we start shooting, and then <laughs> it just happens all over again. What? Yes. So it's it's very fast. So when you yeah that did <laughs> seem fast. Okay. So you get the script, and when you say that you um, submit it for actors, uh, are you talking about on Breakdown Express? Yes. You don't. So you don't send any roles to Actors Access or LA Casting. You don't. No. You don't do that. Even for like little small roles, you don't. You know, on you don't very need... rare occasions, if we're having a hard time finding something very specific okay. um, that maybe agents and managers don't have, um, we might do a really broad search, Actors Access, and other places, too. But, um, but yeah, I mean, as you heard, there, there's already too many submissions. Um, there's a lot of talent out there. So, so if you get 3000 for one role, what do you do with, I mean, how do you prioritize do you say, okay, well, I've worked with this agent, so I know that he brings in good people, or is that, because yeah. I know there's, there's, there's got to be some logic. Factors. Yes, I, if, there, if there's an agent that you know that has a certain, con you know, certain taste that you uh, you appreciate and, you're, you're, you know, you are on the same page. So you'll you know that that agent knows exactly what you want because yeah. they brought in people that fit so almost that, the that, same. So, yeah, so certainly their clients will pop, um, and, you know, sometimes it's a look that you're, you know, that will that will jump out at you. Um, you know, certainly we go through resumes pretty thoroughly uh, to see, you know, what what we're you know to try and find what, you're, what we're excuse me what we're looking for. Um, but uh, it it varies from role to role depending on on the qualities that are that are really the priority. Sometimes we were looking for um, a security guard, but he's got to be a certain height. Right. He's got he's got to you know get into a scuffle with somebody who's really tall. And right. So, so we really, we have to start there, you know, yeah. we have to start with that height first and then we can go and, and look at other things that are important. So mm. it varies. Mm. Tina, any questions on that or Colin? What is the, uh, I suppose, um, I do have a question. What is, do you feel that uh, uh, an actor's social media presence, do you guys take that into consideration when you're casting a role? Like what? on social media how popular they are i know that's 
become sort of a stickler with uh, the casting process and yeah, I wouldn't think you'd have time to do be looking <laughs> no. at any social media. Not well, usually. no, like right. they're, they're, they're rating, you know, yeah. like they have a certain amount of followers. So we're just going to look at actors that have over. Yeah, I know they do 000. that in distribution. Not, not in television, I'll tell you. Um, in I, film. I have heard some, you know, independent films yeah. uh, may really want some kind of following because it, it's built in press for them. Yes. Right. Um, uh, so, yeah, I can I can get that. Um, but no, not in television yeah. at all. Um, yeah, because with film, it's like, okay, who am, if there's two actors that you have are equivalent, I have a friend that works at a very large distribution company, and he says, I'll be honest with you, Priscilla, if it comes down to it, we will look at the following. We'll look at the social media because we want to pick somebody who has a large following because they're going to bring in the people. Yeah. So, you know, that is important with more so film than television. Yeah. Colin, did you have a question? I do. Um, I'm. I was curious to see because you're working a lot for for television shows, mm -hmm. and I was wondering if you would have chance to work with a lot of, um, how can I say, international talents, like um, um, a talents who are not originally from the U.S. or or an uh, English sexy company. Asian persuasion <laughs> like yourself. Let's just talk. Well, like, um, <laughs> I, I hate it when you when you when you um, but I just think you're damn sexy. Can I just get don't get over it? <laughs> Go ahead. OK, um, going back to the question. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I was uh, re I recently met up with the manager um, and, you know, and possibly talk about a representation. Mm -hmm. I, I do have an agent now, uh, but she she was was interested in um, being a manager for me. And one of the things that she mentioned at the meeting was, are you going to take um, accent reduction class? And that, that just hit me. And I was like, wait a minute. I, I've never, well, I wasn't born here, mm -hmm. but I lived in U.S. long enough to, you know, communicate um, in, in English. And I had no problem. I didn't want to, like, you know, speak like an American American, but okay. I would, I just wanted to be at a certain level where I can communicate and be understood. Mm -hmm. um, and now if I were to try to break into this industry and try to work professionally as an actor in, in TV field, um, do you think it's necessary for international actors who's, who, ha who have a little bit of accent or thick accent to take those classes? Or, or do you think that's necessary? I don't think it's necessary to, to be a successful actor um, with an accent. It will limit some of the roles that, that you will be considered for. Mm -hmm. um, but no, I mean, I, there are tons of actors that, that, uh, that have an accent they cannot um, eliminate or you know cannot Americanize I guess um, and uh, and they still work so I it's completely your call it's it, you do you want to go out for those roles that um, that require you to have an American accent mm -hmm. um, then then you may have to you know work on it uh, but otherwise you know right now just try to try to get yourself out there just try to get some some uh, some uh, some work with you know who you are so I, I wouldn't worry about it just yet. Mm. So, but it, it's up to you. Yeah. And the more accents you do, the more castable, is that a word? Castable you are. Castable. Right? <laughs> I mean, my God, you know, it's amazing. Australian actors do incredible American accents. Like, I can't even tell that they're Australian. And British people, too. Sometimes they speak better than the American people. But that's, I mean, that makes them... I mean, they're very smart to get the dialect down because, look, they're, they're head like, like uh, I Zombie. I didn't even know that she was Australian. And so many um, foreign people, foreign actors are uh, speaking perfect American accents and they're getting cast in the top roles. OK, so what ha now, what are some casting directors pet peeves about working with actors now? Everybody has, you know, different things. It's a Pandora's box. Right? It <laughs> is. It really is. But and so like some people don't like people who come in and wear perfume. Some don't want you to even come at them with your bony, scrawny little fingers shaking their hand. They don't want to touch you. But what are just maybe three? Three of the top oh, ones. You can't just let me three. That's not I fair. know. I know. All right. Well, as many as you can round <laughs> off because I know well, there's I will, so many. I, I mean, I, I think. 
uh, anybody that what, whether you're an actor or anybody, you, you just need to be mindful that that other people feel differently than you do. Yeah. Maybe very sensitive, you know, to certain things. Um, Maybe some things that are not common, because common sense would tell you what to do and what not to sure. do, but. Maybe yeah. some things you wouldn't think about. Uh, Maybe that's a better Well, question. I would say be mindful of things that are distracting or could be distracting to other people. And, and it, you can't cover everything, but I will say, you know, it could be a wardrobe choice. Um, it could be, um, you know, u- using props. Things that will take us out of the scene and we start thinking about what you're doing or what you're wearing. And that's, that's not where the focus should be. It's got to be on your performance. Yeah. So I, I I caution actors all the time, you know, just be be careful of that stuff. I, sometimes, you know, a, a woman will come in with uh, really expensive shoes or a bag that um, that my partner Susan will 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 notice, and and I know that for like ten or twenty seconds she's thinking about that bag, yeah, or those shoes, <laughs> and she's not watching the performance right, because it right. happens to me too. You know, someone will come in with um you know with a uniform because they're coming in for a cop or something, and and I'll be thinking. Did they go to the store and buy that that uh-huh. outfit for this audition? Uh, right, you know, right. And, and it's like, oh my gosh, how much money did they right. spend on this or that? And so, and they think they're coming in like they really yes. want. You're going to appreciate that right. they got the outfit. Yeah. Ah. So, so just be careful. We can easily be distracted. You don't want us to re- be distracted by those silly things. Right. right. You want us to be focused on you and your performance. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Tina, you have a question. Uh, that was going to be one of my questions. What is your What are your pet peeves? Um, what uh, What do you When do you find it necessary to give an actor a redirect in an audition? When is that appropriate? And when is it? I guess a twofold question. And when is it appropriate for an actor to say, uh, "Would you like to see it another way"? Um, okay. Uh, yeah. So, uh, I, I will often redirect if, uh, if I feel like they could do it, but they're not getting it. They're not, or maybe there's a different choice that I think will, will get them there. Uh, sometimes I'll ask them to, uh, I'll, to do it a different way or just do it again um, just to see what else, you know, they have. If they, It's a shaky start. It depends. You know, if I'm in a pre-read session, I have a little bit more flexibility right. and time to, 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 uh, to redirect. Um, and, uh, I, you know, I, as I said earlier, as we talked about earlier, we want the actors that come in to nail it because, you know, we already spent all this time going through thousands of submissions to bring yeah. in this small group of actors. They have to do great because they, we, one of them has got to book the role. Um, so, yeah, we, uh, there are many opportunities, uh, but it doesn't always happen. Sometimes, you know, we see enough uh, just from that one performance. We don't need to see it again. Um, you know, maybe they still get a call back. Maybe they don't. Maybe, you know, there's so many other, other things that, that are, uh, that the actor can't even control, um, that go into that, that decision making. So, um, I definitely would, wouldn't want actors to be discouraged from not getting that redirect, uh, because it's oftentimes not necessary. Um, sometimes I just redirect just to play, just to have some fun and try something different because maybe there's a side of it that I wanted to see if it works, you know, like maybe something just popped in my head. Oh, there's another way we could try this. Let's see if this right. works, you know? So it's, it's really, we're just playing around uh, a lot of times, just trying to see what fits and what, you know, what will work. As for the actors, um, asking, uh, it's, you know, it's tough. Uh, yes, you can ask, but chances are, unless we've, offered it up, you probably are going to get a no, that's fine, that was great, whatever. Um, and, you know, sometimes when an actor asks if you want to see it another way, it comes off a little insecure. Mm. Um, like, you know, like maybe they felt like they, they could do better or, 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 or they just want, you know, more time to, to, to play, which is perfectly yeah. fine. I, I get it. Um, but uh, but it, I don't think it's necessary. Is this true? Um, one friend of mine who's a casting director said um, that when they ask you, do you have any questions? It's really them saying, are you ready? Rather than they want you to ask it's, a question, but that doesn't mean that you're not. What It's, it's both. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't always ask that question, but I, I do want actors to know that that, that is That's an option. This is your time. Um, we don't want you to, to, uh, to ramble on and ask a dozen questions, but yes, uh, if you have a question that is going to help you give the best performance, we want you to ask it. 
Um, and yes, I, I will sometimes say, do you have any questions? And, and yes, that, that is a, an indication that we're ready to start. Um, but also that is an opportunity to ask if you, if you do have it. Um, highly, highly recommend that you ask questions uh, especially in pre-read sessions where you have a little bit more time and flexibility in producer sessions if there's something that you didn't get answered um, you know prior I mean yeah ask us it's fine uh, we had an actor the other day who wanted to know, uh, you know what happened what was just being told to me by this actor well yeah you need to know that information because that really impacts you know what's happening in this informs scene. you yeah, but absolutely. yeah <laughs> and a lot of times on the sides when you get them they'll have a big X and cross through it, but you know what? Read it anyway, because oh, yeah. that is going to tell you what's going and on. And I'll, I'll tell you, in our sides, we try to give actors as much information as possible, and sometimes they may get annoyed because there's a lot of FYI pages in our yeah. sides. So try to reference almost anything where the actor, where the role is spoken about, or they're or they're in other scenes. Um, we try to provide all that with a limit of like 15 pages, um, but. Uh, yeah, we, we do that so that we want you to have all the information. So, yes, please read it. Yeah. And if it's crossed out, definitely read it because that, there's context there. There's information that's, that's right. going, to, going to fill you in. That's right. And um, now, have you ever, now you've been around millions of actors. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever run across actors that suck majorly in auditions, but if you cast them they would rock that roll out like nobody's business absolutely oh, yeah. thank you oh, yes. thank you because i am proud to admit i suck at auditions i don't even act but when i did i was the worst but if i got the role i was like yeah all right and i could do it you know and um robert de niro was saying you know it's not it he said don't priscilla it's not you're you're gonna suck if you suck. He was terrible at auditions. He hated them. He hated auditions. He's like, I'm telling you, that's not the end of the world. You just gotta find somebody that knows that and doesn't call you. Yeah, acting, <laughs> acting and auditioning are two totally different beasts, yeah, as they you are, guys are, are yeah. aware. Um, and it, it is a whole other skill set. Um, yeah. And and yes, you know, you have to master auditioning um, in order to to have those opportunities to get that work. You know, yeah. Yes, we might know, you know, this actor and we know they can do better and uh, um, but uh, but you know, a lot of times you have to nail it in the room. Or I really know, close. that's yeah. terrible. It, it's 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 I, I feel for actors. I really do because <laughs> I, I this is one reason one of the many reasons why I'm not an actor, uh, is because I can't go through that. I guess yeah. that's painful. It is um, the memorization. All the judgment, people writing notes about me. Yeah. I can't the, <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> The memorization alone is yeah. traumatic, but then when you're in front of people, some people can't uh, can't process the whole process, for lack of a word. Um, but there are many actors out there that it's very sad um, that they won't even go in front of casting directors and won't go out and audition because they they cannot get over the stage fright involved. Have you yeah. heard those stories? I, I I get that. That's possible. So I mean, there there are certainly um, some even well-known actors who are bad at auditions yeah. and they will just they won't read for anything and they're fine not auditioning and not getting work uh but maybe the occasional offer you yeah. know, that, that will come their way yeah. so and yeah they're fine with that, that that's that's and that's a, terrible a, because you need to audition to get it's, the good part it's really hard you know walking into a room uh, a waiting room and you see seven or eight other actors there women in my case that are you know they're there reading for the same part and you're like oh shit she's I know her she's fucking great or she's beautiful or you know I don't care what you look like I just can't memorize the damn lines oh well yeah, I there's can't that. memorize yeah. that I cannot it's like okay can you just let me do my own lines and it'll go <laughs> well for everyone except maybe the writer for, I know <laughs> Like, no, that's not going to work. Well, Tina, what I will say is um, just remember you're there for a reason. You're there I know. because you bring something unique I know. and special. And, and then I start going, well, oh, well, okay, if I were casting this, I think I would cast her. And I'm like, shut up. Why are you saying that? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Don't do that. But I know. I know. Yeah, what, is the, what is the the craziest casting experience you've ever had? Like where an actor just went. 
Okay. A wall. There are Just a many stories. There are yeah. many. I'll, I'll give you two. Um, one where a really well known actor um, uh, was coming in for a mini series that we were working on. And, um, and we have a camera behind me. I was reading. And he's you know reading with me, and he was he's a very uh, he was a very good actor, um, and he decided that this was a very physical scene, and he got really close he to did. me, and and he squeezed uh, like towards the end of the scene, and he squeezed my cheeks, and 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 then he slapped my face like <gasps> playfully. But, oh my but, but, but he's standing, you know, he's standing right here. The camera can't see him because he's so close, and oh. and I can't see my sides because he's so close. <laughs> And, and like, they slapped you silly yeah, again. Like, and, and of course, you know, I was a little. This was earlier in my career, and I couldn't say anything. This is. I was already a little intimidated. Really <laughs> that is the five minutes. Oh, okay. oh, wow! Five minutes. Time is flying. Yeah, but I was a little intimidated, you know, by by this, you know, well-known actor, and you know that I got to read with, and wow. and so yeah. Um, but no, we've had. Uh, uh, gosh, I've had an actor dive into my couch at the end of a scene. Um, <gasps> Actors screaming at the top of their lungs in a room very, very sm- much smaller than this. Right. Um, you know, for no reason <gasps> sometimes. See, I love that. <laughs> it's uh, And, of course, actors bringing weapons. Don't mm, ever I bring weapons. That. Even play weapons. Mm. Yes. Even, you know, dollar store toy. Yeah. You know, toy guns. No. Yeah. No. no, no. Um, yeah. So it's it happens. Uh, I think I, I'm going to be a ca- I want to be a casting director now. <laughs> you get to live all day. So you get to go home and tell all these There's stories. All these stories. Yes. That's <laughs> like an exciting life you've got rocking it out. At. Let's see that. We're all go- we, second career. I'm going to be a casting director. But that's fun though, right? I mean, I love it. You've got to love it's it every day. There's so many challenges that we. Uh, I love problem solving. Mm-hmm. Um, all the issues that yeah. pop up, even the ones that frustrate me and yeah. make me want to scream. Um, and I just, I love finding that match, that actor that goes with that part. You know, sometimes it's not who I would choose and that the producers, you know, go, and sometimes it's just perfect. It's kismet. They just, right. they, 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 you know, they go with the, the right choice. Uh, bringing someone in that I saw in a play that's never done anything before and they book their first guest star on mm, their show. Right. Like, those things are just, yeah. it just makes me so happy. Do you I feel like you that. have creative um, creative input. I mean, yeah. if you if, if you if someone walks into a room and you really feel like they have something to offer, can you fight for them? And do that's they? All we and do. All that's the time. great. Yeah, uh, well, we we fight for the, for the actors all the time, and uh, and sometimes it might mean changing the concept of the role. Um, you know, they may have wanted this to be a certain way, and and this actor just brings a, an element that just is so interesting and and, and not. Yeah, does that ha- happen often? Where you a, a person walks into the room and you say, "Wow, none of us thought of it that way," and we're more, we're going to take a chance on this person more, more and, than you would think. Yeah, yeah, because there's some you see some performances on television. There's such great television on right now that you see some of these actors that are just you just think. I wonder if they walked into the room with that, or was that the creative choice? Because they're so wonderfully unique. Perfect and, example of that. I was cast in a small role in Dodgeball, right? Yeah. And my original part was um, I was a naughty nurse, and there were some scenes. That sounds perfect. Right, that's perfect for. <laughs> me all right any kind of touching squeezing it's all rocking for me and um and then um something oh they cut the role but ben stiller and i we got to talk at the i didn't know that there were this was early in the in my career so i didn't know that i wasn't uh, allowed to go with vince vaughn eating in the same line (laughs) right so i was way over in the steak line not in the hot dog and chips line who knew but anyway ben stiller just loved his conversation with me and he made um, ben Stiller's behind the computer mm-hmm. where he's watching porn, where he likes big women. If you freeze the camera, all right, and you look to the left, I'm on the DVD cover as a naughty nurse. <laughs> so I walked in with one roll, That's walked hysterical. out with another. He made it happen. <laughs> Right. So um, first, well, we are going to thank you so much for coming on. And I wanted to know what is the best way for actors to submit for upcoming projects. So do you just do NCIS right now? Because those are just huge. NCIS I mean, and NCIS at Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Um, but yeah, for submitting for our shows. You're we, not doing anything else other than agents those. and managers. Um, you know, there there may be other projects down the road uh, where you'll you'll find other opportunities. So there, the agents and managers yeah. know how to submit. 
exactly. for you. No SAG eligible, just no, has to be SAG. No, no SAG eligible? Oh, please, all, oh, all actors really? are considered. Are you kidding me? No. Oh, that's great. I, I mean, yes, we have we have to do our due diligence. We have to consider union actors over non-union actors. Um, uh, but but we taft hardly all the time. Oh, if that's someone great. if someone is 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 right for the role and uh, and yeah, absolutely. No, I would not discourage you from. Uh, from Wonderful. From That's great. So are you okay with people contacting you uh, like uh, any other way? Like if they, you, at, at, we already kind of said it's your t- thing. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> so just follow them and like them. Don't yeah, be trying exactly. to submit to and, and listen, poor Jason. I'm not going to reply. I don't He's reply not going to gonna me, reply to you. I do read He's my got messages, cocktails so. he's got to get down on. <laughs> cocktails and dressing up those damn cats. <laughs> he's busy. <laughs> All right. Well, um, do you have one last question? We got to one last question. Yes. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> um, one last question will be I, 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 I'm, I'm sure you know this, um, but um, I see a lot of I get a lot of self tape auditions nowadays. Yeah. Do you do you do them uh, with the with the tr- television casting, too? Yes. Yes, yeah? absolutely. Um, hey, I'm just putting myself Thank on camera. So <laughs> Thank I'll, you. Let me do it for <laughs> you this Thank time. You. Um, but yeah. Yes. Uh, we. Uh, if someone's not available to come in, mm-hmm. um, we will uh, allow them to to put themselves on tape, and we will watch those tapes. Um, and sometimes, a lot of times, it's a pre-read set, uh, appointment, and so we'll use that self tape to determine whether or not we can call them back. Um, and if it's uh, if it's a you know if it's somebody that uh, that's not available to come in at all for producers, uh, we'll sometimes show them to our producer. We've cast people off of tape. Um, right now, uh, we've got a, an actor recurring on NCIS Los Angeles who's from New York, and uh, and he uh, went on tape. Uh, and, uh, and and uh, which and character? Uh, Peter Jacobson. He plays um, uh, Rogers on the show. He's, you've seen him a few times. Oh, I watched. He's from show House. Week. Um, he's a fantastic actor. Okay. Uh, really great addition to the show, and and he he was a self tape. Um, and so yeah. That cast is. So incredible! The, it's magical, right? Yeah. NCS Los Angeles. Actually, so both fortunate. of them. We're I mean, so I've been watching both shows since day one, yeah. and the casting. There is never, and I'm not giving you any props now. I'm just saying in general. But the casting, it's just so magical because you never see someone and go, "I really wouldn't have cast that person." Just like oh, Alan Hooper, he casts for uh, Modern Family. <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and 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 when you see Modern Family, you go, God, Alan, you did such a great job. But there's just, you know, it's amazing. Casting is an art form, just I like so. acting. I mean, it's all just one big team. Yeah. Well, do you have any questions for us? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Jason, for coming for on. I didn't you. it go fast. You were it thinking, did. God, what am I gonna do for fifty minutes? <laughs> <gasps> but it went fast. Can I get you to come back on maybe next year? Yeah, happy to. Yeah. I'd love it. Maybe just we'll just bring you on so you don't feel baby by yourself. Oh. That's all right. <laughs> I can, as you can as you can see we can handle any kind of things that come our way. But we wanted to thank you so much and um we wish you the very very best. I'm hoping that NCIS both of them are going to be on for a couple more years. I hope so too. I, I will say that At least cause it, there's a very good chance rocking. we'll be back next season. So um yeah. The, please don't take I'm away my 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 boys. I love my boys. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, follow and like Jason Michael Kennedy. Do you go by the full name or just Jason Kennedy? You know, I started I billing myself full name. That, that full way. But, yeah, uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Priscilla Leona Horn. Yeah, I like <laughs> Jason uh, at Kennedy Casting. And you want to check out ChristinaCarlisi.com. Yes. <laughs> and we're going to let you say it. Uh, call Your name Lim. is Colin Lim. Colin Lim on IMDb. <laughs> IMDb.com. Yes. Thank you so much, everybody. Tune in next week. Bye. Thank you, Priscilla. You're listening to Question Reality with Priscilla Leona right here on LA Talk Radio.